Did you know you can add hammered metal to your models using this simple procedural texture that contains only a dozen of Blender's shader nodes? Let me show you how. Let's fire up Blender and open our model, where you will immediately notice that I'm using the EV render engine with a low sample count. For the lighting, I'm using one of Blender's default world lighting presets. The model itself is rather simple. It's made up of two cylinders, each with a solidify and a bevel modifier attached. The outer cylinder is where we want the hammered metal, so with the outer cylinder selected, let's go to the materials tab and add a new material to it. I'm going to name this material, to no surprise, hammered metal. We can now head over to the shading viewport. We don't need most of the parameters of the default principled BSDF node on our procedural texture, so let's delete it. Then, using the Add menu and the Search field, let's find Blender's Glossy BSDF node and add it to our shader. Use the color input of this node to set the base color of the hammered metal and decrease the roughness value to get a shiny metal look. Now, to generate the hammered metal look on the material, we're going to add some more nodes to this procedural shader. So, again, using the Add menu and the Search field, drop in a Texture Coordinate node, a Voronoi Texture node, a Math node, and a Bump node. Make sure to select the Smooth F1 option on the Voronoi Texture node. On the math node, set the operation to power with an exponent of 2. Then reduce the strength of the bump node, and with that you should have a procedural texture that looks like hammered metal. Easy enough, you can already use this in your models, but to make things more interesting, we're going to add some more details to this procedural texture. So, the next step is to add a subtle layer of brushed metal. To do this, we need to add a few more nodes to our procedural shader. This includes a mapping node, a noise texture node, and another bump node. Use the scale values on the mapping node to set the direction of the brush strokes. And, on the Noise Texture node, increase the scale value to refine the strokes. Finally, decrease the strength value of the bump node to prevent the brush texture from overshadowing the hammered texture of the metal. Now, as a side note, if I remove the hammered part of the metal by dropping the strength of the original bump node to zero, we will get a pure brushed metal texture, which is the same procedural texture I have used for the inner cylinder. Depending on the model, you can use the strength value of the two bump nodes to skew the procedural texture towards a more hammered look or towards a more brushed look. Now to make the reflections on the hammered metal more stylized, let's add a subtle Fresnel effect. We can do this by either using a Fresnel node, or in this case, a layer weight node, along with a map range node, and a mix RGB node. The map range node remaps the input it takes from the layer weight node and passes the result to the mix RGB node. You can set the base color of the Mix RGB node by dragging over the color tab of the Glossy BSDF node. The second color will be the color of the Fresnel effect. As mentioned before, the Fresnel effect produces a subtle color change towards the edges of the model. You can adjust the size of the Fresnel effect using the values of the Map Range node. If you want to learn more about procedural textures, shaders, and materials, consider watching my other videos. As for this one, thank you for watching, and until next time, take care.